Hello, everyone. Welcome to Unity of New Westminster's celebration service. Please join in the singing of our opening song today. Take our places at the table A moment to remember and reflect upon our wealth Here's to loving friends and family Here's to being able Together here, together in good company and health And may we be released from all those feelings that would harm us May we have the will to give them up and get them gone For heavy are the satchels full of anger and false promise May we have the strength to put them down May the light of love be shining deep within your spirit May the torch of mercy clear back and show the way May the horn of plenty sound so everyone can hear it. May the light of love be with you every day. And may we wish the best for everyone that we encounter. May we swallow pride and may we do away with fear. For it's only what we do not know That we have grown afraid of And only what we do not choose to hear May the light of love be shining deep within your spirit May the torch of mercy clear the path and show the way May the horn of plenty sound so everyone can hear it May the light of love be with you every day and as we bless our daily bread and drink our day's libation, may we be reminded of the lost and wayward soul, the hungry and the homeless that we have in every nation. May we fill each empty cup and bowl. May nothing ever come between our threatened to divide us. May we never take for granted all the gifts that we receive. Being ever mindful of the unseen hands that guide us and the miracles that cause us to believe. May the light of love be shining deep within your spirit. May the torch of mercy clear the path and show the way. May the horn of plenty sound so everyone can hear it. May the light of love be with you every day. May the horn of plenty sound so everyone can hear it. May the light of love be with you. May the light of love be with you. May the light of love be with you every day. Welcome back. I am Reverend Rona Segarra, and it is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the community at Unity of New Westminster in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. We would love to stay connected with you. So please subscribe to our newsletter or like us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel. And that way you can always know what's going on in our community. The Unity Movement offers ideas for full and abundant living. We draw on the teachings of Jesus, who we consider our primary way shower and example. And we honor that there is universal wisdom to be found in faith traditions, in song, in story, in poetry, all over the planet. We respect and honor every person's right 
to choose their own life path. All are welcome here. All are worthy here. All are celebrated here. We open our service today in prayer. I gratefully acknowledge that I speak to you on the traditional and unceded territory of the Semiamu First Nation. And we give thanks to First Nation peoples everywhere for their custody of this beautiful land. We give thanks for our connection one with each other that connection that happens whether we are in each other's physical presence or not. The connection that binds us all together. We acknowledge that there is only one presence, that there is only one power, that power that is understood by many names, many faces and many paths. And we affirm that regardless of the name, the face, or the path of our understanding, that we are one human family. And it is in that knowledge of our oneness that we send a blessing for love, for peace, for contentment to every being on this planet, to every being, regardless of all the labels that threaten to divide us. We are one. And for this knowledge, for this intention and for the power that we have to bless, we give thanks. Amen. If love is why I'm here, let me If love is why I'm here, let me give and then receive. If love is why I'm here, let me be an open channel. If love is why I'm here, let me give and then why I'm here. Let me be an open channel. If love is why I'm here, let me give and then receive. If love is why I'm here, let me be is why I'm here. Let me give and then receive. Give and receive. Give and receive.
is why you're here. May you give and then receive. Give and receive. Give and receive. What if it were possible to live effortlessly with an attitude of love and compassion for yourself and for others? What if you could hold on to thoughts and feelings so positive that only good would be drawn into your life? What if you could clear out the debris of the past and any fears about the future so thoroughly that spirit could shine from within you and light up the world. That is the point of spiritual growth. So writes Unity Minister Ellen Devonport in her book, The Five Principles. What an awesome possibility, the idea that we might be able to live effortlessly with love and compassion for ourselves and for those around us. How exciting to consider that we might add light to the world. How do we get there? Well, in 1989, Connie Fillmore, an ordained Unity Minister herself and the great-granddaughter of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, who are the co-founders of Unity, Connie was asked to summarize Unity's teachings in an article that was to be written for the Daily Word magazine. <clears throat> the article was incorporated into a booklet to be used as a month-long study of Unity's basic teachings. And so she considered the teachings of Unity and condensed them into five essential points which we now refer to as the five principles of unity. Taken together, these principles offer the promise of an awareness of God. They offer an, a promise of an awareness of our own oneness with each other, our own oneness with God, a connection that we have with each other and with God. The principles offer insights into how we can interpret our life experiences in a way that is full and abundant. And they offer a feedback loop for us to keep us aligned and in the flow of divine energy and abundant life. My simplified way of remembering these five principles of unity is captured in the song set to the tune of Happy Birthday. And forgive my singing, but it goes like this. One universal power, a network of all ideas lead to experiences. Take time to be still. You'll live in peace. Today, we will look at the first of the five principles at, of unity. And in the following weeks, we'll build on that foundation to explore each of the five principles. So the first principle is one universal power also known as, in writing, God is absolute good everywhere present. We can expand this to say, there is one presence and one power in my life and in the universe, God. We can shorten it to say, God is all. Or, my language, there is no spot that God is not. Now, some of us here may have some resistance to the word God. 
we may have been raised with the concept of an angry God, a guy, always a guy, sitting up in heaven with a beard and long robes and a clipboard, keeping track of our every movement and demanding unending devotion from us, punishing us if we are unworthy or if we are not obedient enough. And I am reminded of a skit in the Monty Python movie, The Meaning of Life, where students are in church and they are repeating after the, the minister, or I think it was the principal of the school, but something to the effect of, oh God, who you are so big, so absolutely huge. We're all really impressed down here, I can tell you. Well, Monty Python certainly takes things to an extreme that seems ridiculous. And yet many of us grew up with that Old Testament God where we had to essentially say, oh God, we're really impressed down here. I can tell you that God of punishing and keeping score, of taking sides, of winning battles for the side that he favors and causing awful things to happen to those who don't show enough obedience. This principle, this principle of one universal power invites us to expand our view of God to be bigger than that. Instead of God being this limited Santa Claus-like creature, creature is not the right word, instead of God being this Santa Claus-like being who sees you when you're sleeping and knows when you're awake, so you better be good, or you're going to get a lump of coal. Can we work to wrap our heads around the idea that there is no spot that God is not? And that we don't need to be obedient to God for God to be present in our lives. When we say God is all, what does that mean? Across the planet, God is called and understood by many names, many faces. And we speak about that every week as part of our opening prayer. God, Spirit, Allah, Shiva, Mother, Father, Goddess, Spirit, creator, universal energy, divine intelligence, the force, divine mind, to name just a few. Regardless, though, of the name that we may have for the God of our understanding, let us consider the idea that there is only one power, one power that encompasses all. And that power is all-knowing, all-powerful, all-present, omnip on omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Omni meaning all. That means that the only force that operates in this universe, as well as in our lives, is a force that is both potential and actual, both visible and invisible. This force, this creative energy is always present, always at work, moving in and out of form. God, creative energy. In the book, The Secret, James Ray says, and I quote, you go to a quantum physicist and you say, what creates the world? And he or she will say, energy. 
well, describe energy. Okay, it can never be created or destroyed. It always was, always has been. Everything that ever existed always exists. It's moving through form and out of form. You go to a theologian and ask what created the universe, and he or she will say, God. Okay, describe God. Always was, always has been, never can be created or destroyed. All that ever was, always will be, always moving into form, through form and out of form. You see, it's the same description, just different terminology. End quote. So says James Ray in the book, The Secret. Now this concept that God is all is not unique to unity. The Bhagavad Gita refers to God. By me is this entire universe pervaded. All things are in me and I in them. Know that as the mighty wind blowing everywhere rests in the sky, all created beings rest in me. I am the father, the mother, the supporter, and the grandsire of the universe. Isn't that beautiful? It's just so poetic. The supporter, the grandsire of the universe. My favorite definition of God, my personal definition of God, is actually drawn from Star Wars and the Force. When Yoda describes the Force in the following way, it is the energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us, penetrates us, it binds the universe together. The Force is this and more. It cannot be fully described with words. And then later, Yoda again refers to the Force as the source of power. Quote, life creates it, makes it grow. Its energy surrounds us and binds us. End quote. God energy surrounds us and binds us. God is both within us and all around us. Not out there only, separate from us, but rather out there and, as Jesus said, one with us. He said, the Father and I are one. And as Paul said, we live and move and have our being in God. This can be a difficult concept to master because we are so used to the idea of a God out there that we pray to out there that it is hard to wrap our heads around the idea that God is both external to us and as well part of us. But if it is true that there is no spot that God is not, then that includes all of us. God isn't in all things because that would imply that there is a place that God is not. Rather, God is all things. God is all things. All things are God. Everything is God. By whatever the God of your understanding, call it any one of these names, there is one power. Consider the consequences. If we could adopt this idea that there is one universal power, how would that impact our life and our world right now? Well, first, there would be less tendency 
to think in terms of my God is better than your God. Think for a moment of the harm that has been done in the name of my God is better than your God. My God is bigger than your God. My God is the right one and yours is not. There have been individuals, cities, towns, countries harassed and tried and sometimes executed as a result of this belief that my way is the right way and so yours must be wrong. There have been families who have cut off family members because of these differences in belief. Man-made wars on both the individual level, individual to individual, as well as country level. Man-made wars on a grand scale, all with the intention to force people to change their beliefs, all in the name of God. So much harm has been done in the name of God, in the name of love, in the name of I'm going to save you because my way is the right way. Did you know, have you considered that Judaism, Christianity and Islam, which was only born in the seventh century after Jesus, did you ever consider that all three of these major world religions all serve and worship the God of Abraham? They all worship the same God. And yet we find all of these reasons to find differences. Imagine if we could believe that there is only one universal power. Every culture has a God concept. That is because we humans recognize that there is something greater than we can understand that is at work in the universe and in our lives. As Yoda said, the force cannot be explained. And they are all different names for the same power. If we could believe that there is no spot, that God is not, that it is one universal power, then we would increase our acceptance of all the different paths of understanding. And I have this cartoon-like image in my imagination of all the different God identities created by man sitting up in the ether somewhere, in the heavens somewhere, having tea, sipping down and looking down at us humans and shaking their heads and saying to each other, they still don't get it. We still don't get it. Imagine the freedom that could come from accepting that there is one power. No religious warfare. No dogmatic difference that insists on one right way. Another consideration of this idea is that there would be no favoritism then in God. Think back to what I just spoke about, these wars that have been perpetrated across the globe. And often we see in movies how one side will kneel down and pray to God, pray to God for deliverance, for success, for the ability to vanquish our enemy. Cut screen to the other side, to the other group, 
And they are also on their knees praying to God, asking for exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. Both sides of a conflict, each praying to different versions of the same God, each asking God to be with them, to show them favor by giving them the victory. If you think of it from that point of view, it seems ludicrous. There is no spot that God is not. God is all of it. And God does not bless one group while looking less favorably on another group. No right, no wrong, no punishment. God is bigger than Santa Claus. Jesus reminds us of this in Matthew, where we are told that the Father causes his son to reign, uh, his reign to fall on the just and the unjust, and the son to shine on the righteous and the unrighteous. God is all of it. And that leads to the next point, which is that it is all included. The righteous and the unrighteous, the just and the unjust, the good and the not so good. Life isn't a contract. As many people have discovered, just because we are devoutly religious doesn't mean that we are immune to heartache and hurt. It doesn't mean that sad things won't happen to us. We don't have to be obedient in, in, in um, a contract where, you know, if I do this, then this is not going to happen to me. No. And what that frees us from is the thinking of, I must have done something wrong because my husband is asking for a divorce. I've just lost my job. My, um, I've just been in a car accident. I've just received a horrible diagnosis. No. That just means that you're part of a human race and living. And all of those unpleasant things are part of it. That's what happens in life. And so we free ourselves from the, I should have, if only I'd, I was to, and all of those feelings and messages that we give ourselves about what we should have done, could have done, ought to have done to please God and appease God so that none of these horrible things would happen to us, but they would only happen to the other people who were less deserving. The sun rise, the sun shines on the just. No, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. The sun shines on the righteous and the unrighteous. We are exposed in life to all of it. And then another implication of leaning into this idea that there is no spot that God is not, that there is only one universal power, is that there is no God on one side and the devil on the other in competition with each other. I think that at times there is the, the good ear and the not so good ear talking to us saying, you know, the higher path would be this and the more human path or the lesser path would be this. These are your options. But in the grand scheme of things, and like after death, there is no such thing as the devil and God working in competition with each other. And I am reminded of a song by Chris de Berg called Spanish Train. And in that story, in that song, which is, of course, a story, uh, Chris de Berg talks about God and the devil on a train in Spain where 
God and the devil play chess for the souls of the dead. The most important thing that we can gather from this idea that there is no spot that God is not, is that there is no evil force in competition with God. God is all of it. That can really mess with your mind. Because there are things that happen that just seem absolutely abhorrent. And this belief, this principle, implies and means that God is in that too. God is in all of life. God is in all of death. Ups downs, pleasantness, unpleasantness, destruction, formation. It's all included. And what we can take to add some comfort to what might feel like a discomforting thought is that there is order at work at all times in God. As my mom often says, it's all good. Everything that happens has the potential for good and beauty to be the outcome. So many times, things that have seemed chaotic and out of control and unbearable and just plain wrong, at the time have turned out to be turning points and tipping points for something new and beautiful to emerge. There is only one power, and in that one power is intelligence and order and <clears throat> mathematical beauty beyond our comprehension. If you have any doubt, look at the magnificence of the design of one single flower. Look at how the seed emerges and bake, breaks through the darkness of the ground. Look at how its petals emerge gently and then arrange themselves perfectly to capture the light of the sun. Look at how a plant absorbs water to sustain its life and how it interacts with other plants and with bees to grow again. And then how the plant apparently dies only to emerge again after a period of dormancy. It is brilliant. There is creative energy at work with intelligence and order all the time. The intelligence of life. And this one idea alone to look at a flower and see the intelligence through the apparent chaos, through the apparent death, can help us to sustain our faith when we question, where is God in all this? There is no spot that God is not. And so this week has you live your life. I encourage you to notice how often you label something as good or bad. How often you see things as being part of God and other things as being outside of God somehow. If you catch yourself doing that, 
see if you can reframe it. Reframe that idea using the thought that there is no spot that God is not. Using the image of a flower and the beauty and intelligence inherent in that simple, simple, complicated, beautiful expression of life. Pay attention to the idea of my God is better than your God. Remind yourself that there is no favoritism and no need to bargain with God. <laughs> Remind yourself that pleasantness and unpleasantness are all included. And trust that there is an intelligence greater than we can understand at work in our lives and in the lives of the people around us and in the lives of our planet and the life that is all our universe. There is one universal power. No spot that God is not. One universal power. No spot that God is not. I bless you. one power invisible and you see it everywhere and every day one power indescribable and you speak of it with every word you say mysterious until you know the truth as simple as the love inside of you. Call it God, call it Spirit, call it Jesus, call it Lord. Call it Buddha, Baruchah, angels' wings or heaven's door. But whatever name you give it, it's all one power, can't you see? It's the power of
what we are. You are invited to join us on Mondays at 11 o'clock for our weekly prayer service. It is a time where we get together on Zoom and we connect with each other. We share how we are doing with each other. We move into a time of guided prayer and we read the names of the people who are on our prayer list. And it is a time of renewal, of connection. It is a profound experience of recentering. And so I invite you to join us for that. And if you would like your name or you know someone who you would like to have added to that prayer list, then please email us at unityofnewwestminster at gmail.com. And we'll be sure to have the person's name or your name added to our list. Mondays at 11. Our book discussion group will begin again on Zoom on Tuesday, January the 18th. And for seven weeks, we'll read and discuss Brene Brown's book, Braving the Wilderness. This book is available at bookstores, on Kindle, on Audible, and is well worth the read. All are welcome and there is no charge. Last session, we had some really rich discussions and welcome people who are new to our community, which was absolutely awesome. So please join us, invite your friends and family as we discuss this book about belonging, fitting in, and the courage to stand alone. Beginning on Tuesday, January the 18th at 7.30 on Zoom, we begin a discussion about the book, Braving the Wilderness by Brene Brown. There are many ways to give to our ministry at Unity of New Westminster, and we are grateful for the financial support which we receive from the regular as well as one-time donors. Your generosity helps us to support our ministry and continue to share inspiring ideas for full and abundant living. We also support organizations that serve people in our neighborhood, in our province, and in our nation. Donations can be made through Interact electronic transfer, credit card, check, or cash. Please give from your sense of appreciation 
and your feeling of abundance. And thank you for supporting Unity of New Westminster. I invite you now to hold whatever you feel blessed for in your hands, in your heart, financial, family, roof over your head, food on the table, just whatever you are feeling blessed with as we sing our blessing song. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all. And we come to the end of another service. I thank you for joining us. I hope that you enjoyed your experience with us today. I wish you all a very, very blessed week. Goodbye, everybody.
Jagal 